These crooks easily give Disney's baddies a run for their money. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 DreamWorks villains. Extract the Quantonium with extreme prejudice. I want it all. Every last drop. For this list, we're paying tribute to the scoundrels of some of our favorite animated DreamWorks movies and sequels. If you haven't seen any of these villains at their worst, there will be spoilers. This funny little purple pot holds our entire capacity for laughter. For years, I've tried to shrink it or cut it out entirely. Number 10, Eris, Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. So where were we? Oh yes, you were holding your breath. Kicking off this list is the ultimate femme fatale. Eris is the goddess of discord, and she takes great pleasure in her job, plunging the world into glorious chaos. In addition to being deviously beautiful, she has the omnipotent power to change her form and size as she pleases, as well as an army of monsters born from the constellations. How dare you! Everything was going perfectly, and now you do this! Despite her unlimited power and deceitful trickery, she does have one glaring weakness. She cannot break any promises she makes. They're literally embedded into her. Sinbad, when a goddess gives her word, she's bound for all eternity. Despite this, even if she does get outsmarted, she'll just brush it off and move on with her never-ending task of making the world crumble into chaos. And lucky for you, I've got places to go. Things to destroy, stuff to steal. Ta. Number 9. Pitch Black. Rise of the Guardians. Don't look at me like that, old friend. You must have known this day would come. My nightmares are finally ready. Are your guardians? While the Guardians' goal is to bring joy to the world, one terrifying obstacle stands in their way. The boogeyman himself, Pitch Black. Embittered by nobody believing in him, he's hell-bent on plunging the world into darkness and making sure the Guardians are forgotten, leaving them powerless to stop him. Why are you doing this? Maybe I want what you have to be believed in. Being a master manipulator, he knows everyone's deepest fears and delights in torturing them psychologically. You have a bad habit of interfering. Now hand it over and I'll let her go. It's hard to tell when he's being genuine or when he's lying through his pointed teeth. He's that good. However, despite his sadistic, cunning ways, there was one thing Pitch didn't count on, being betrayed by his own fears. Really? Then what are they doing here? <laughs> they can't be my nightmares, I'm not afraid. Looks like it's your fear they smell. Number 8. The Toad. Flushed away. What do you think? As a madman! Run away! Run! Pardon me. My fly's undone. In his youth, Toad had a good life at Buckingham Palace, but when his owner grew more attached to a rat, Toad's happiness was literally sent down the drain. Heartbroken and abandoned, Toad recruits the help of his lackeys, including his cousin LeFrog, to aid in his spiteful plan to wash away all rodents. I find everyone's pain funny but my own. I'm French. <laughs> Just get the cable! It's hard not to sympathize with his reasoning. How would you like it if you were someone's pet and they just tossed you away? Of all the pets in Buckingham Palace, the young Prince Charles fancied me the best. Plus, it's too much fun watching him shift from a sophisticated crime lord to a warty madman. Not unlike Professor Radigan from Disney's The Great Mouse Detective. Fortunately, the rats he sought to eliminate end up beating him with his own amphibious habits. Bobby, look out! <laughs> Number 7. Hal Stewart, also known as Titan, Megamind. If I were Metro Man, Megamind wouldn't be kidnapping you all the time. That's the first thing. Hal Stewart was just a nerdy cameraman looking for love that was out of his league. However, when Megamind needed a new arch nemesis to do battle with, he ended up bestowing incredible superpowers to Hal and secretly trying to mold him into the ultimate superhero. You've been blessed with unfathomable power. What kind of power? Unfathomable. It's unf without fathom. Whoa. 
Unfortunately, when Hal couldn't get the girl of his dreams, he decided that being a villain was more of his vocation and began using his newfound might to conquer the city. You're supposed to be with me! I'm trying to warn you, Hal. It's Titan! It's Titan, not Hal! Even though Megamind was the villain of his own story, he ended up creating an even worse threat, showing that you really have to be careful who you entrust with super abilities, especially the geeky types. Please don't do this. I know there's still good in you, Hal. You're so naive, Roxy. You see the good in everybody even when it's not there. Number 6. Ramses II, the Prince of Egypt. My father had the right idea about how to deal with your people. Ramesses. And I think it's time I finished the job. Ramesses. And there shall be a great cry in all of Egypt. The conflict between Moses and the Pharaoh is a tale as old as time. However, in The Prince of Egypt, Pharaoh Ramses II isn't really evil. In fact, he and Moses were actually best friends and adoptive brothers, even though Moses usually got Ramses into trouble. Come on, Moses, admit it! You've always looked up to me! Yes, but it's not much of a view! When Ramses is crowned as the Pharaoh, the weight of his responsibility gets to him. I have to maintain the ancient traditions. I bear the weight of my father's crown. He is determined to build a great legacy for himself, no matter how many Hebrew slaves he works to the bone. He was a great leader. His hands bore the blood of thousands of children. <laughs> slaves. My people. Unfortunately, his reign ends in tragedy. He loses his firstborn son to Moses' plagues, and his stubbornness drives away his childhood friend, leaving him with no real family to comfort him when he needs it most. Ramesses, you bring this upon yourself. Number 5. Militia and Willard Tweedy, Chicken Run. This would take Tweedy's farm out of the Dark Ages and into full-scale automated production. This unhappy couple managed to turn a chicken farm into a prison camp. While Mr. Tweedy's more of a right-hand stooge, he makes sure that none of the inmates escape, and is the only one of the two to suspect that the chickens are smarter than they look. His wife, on the other hand, is the brains of the operation, wanting nothing more than to make a profit off their useless birds, even through malicious, deadly means like cooking their prisoners into pies. What is it? It's a pie machine, you idiot. Chickens go in, pies come out. Ooh, what kind of pie? Fortunately, she underestimates the birds and she pays the price for it. It's chickens, you dolt! Apart from you, they're the most stupid creatures on this planet. Her scheme literally blows up in the farmers' faces, leaving them rightfully chickenless and penniless. I told you they was organized. <laughs> Number four, Fairy Godmother, Shrek 2. Who are you? Oh, sweet pea. I'm your fairy godmother. I have a fairy godmother? Many remember the story of the fairy godmother, using her benevolent magic to give princesses their happily ever after. In reality, she's a prejudiced, corrupt businesswoman with her own agenda, to have Princess Fiona marry her pretty boy son, Prince Charming, so that she can rule over the kingdom of far, far away. Oh, believe me, Harold, it's what's best. Not only for your daughter, but for your kingdom! She's got no qualms playing mind games with Shrek, trying to ruin his and Fiona's marriage to make it happen, since she firmly believes that ogres can't live happily ever after. You see, ogres don't live happily ever after. All right, look, lady! Don't you point those dirty green sausages at me! She might have succeeded too if it weren't for Shrek and Fiona's love, and a backfired spell. Unfortunately for the happy couple, Prince Charming isn't taking his mother's death and being robbed of his happily ever after lightly. And I promise you this, mother. I will restore dignity to my throne. Number 3. Captain Chantel Dubois, Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. Captain Dubois, I am so happy to see you. Captain Dubois was the best animal control officer Monaco had to offer, and she delighted in hunting beasts down and collecting trophies. So when she was offered a chance to hunt down Alex the lion and mount his head on her wall, she brought her A-game. The pinnacle of my career. To hunt the king of the beasts. Ah. <sighs> 
She's pretty much insane, but she's also the ultimate hunter. Armed with hunting tools of every kind, a dog-like sense of smell, cat-like reflexes, and a singing voice that can heal her lackeys miraculously. So come on, Unfortunately for her, our favorite vagabonds brought an end to her perfect catch streak, and she was last seen being shipped off to Madagascar. Ironic, since that's where the gang ended up in the first movie. Number 2. Lord Farquaad, Shrek I will make this Princess Fiona my queen, and Yulok will finally have the perfect king! Sadly, our runner-up just fell short of being number one. But don't think little of Farquaad, because he has a massive ego, an iron-fisted rule over his kingdom, and a xenophobic vision of a perfect world without fairy tale creatures. There is no dirty deed he won't stoop to, and he doesn't even have to get his own hands dirty. That's enough! He's ready to fall. Ironically, despite his perfectionism, he is blind to his own literal shortcomings, which really makes him an entertaining tyrant who you love to hate. Run, 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 as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man! You're a monster! I'm not the monster here, you are! You and the rest of that fairy tale trash. Unfortunately for him, Farquaad meets his demise at the hands of the fairy tale trash he wishes to dispose of. I will have order! I will have perfection! I will have. But still makes time for one last plot from beyond the grave. Okay, I think a villain tearing up a stage singing Bonnie Tyler's Holding Out for a Hero should be mandatory in all movies. Anyway, our number one pick doesn't do any singing, but that doesn't make them any less iconic. Here's some honorable mentions first, though. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? You belong to me now. A soldier. We all know that one individual ant doesn't matter. But you, not Cutter. <laughs> not even her. Azteca! <laughs> Don't tell that tight ass anything, Weaver! It seems to be missing something. Ah, that's it. It needs more body. Your shark slaying days are over. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. I've spent a long time reeling in that fluffy-headed bunny lover, and I'm not about to let some puddle-headed peasant poach her from me. Comprene? Oh, uh, right -o. Uh, I'll be off then. Uh, ta -ta. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lord Shen, Kung Fu Panda 2 yeah, It's your parting gift, in that it will part you. Part of you here, part of you there, and part of you way over there, staining the wall. We still give credit to Tai Lung for his tragic backstory. I have come home, master. This is no longer your home, and I am no longer your master. But we have to give it up to this devilish peacock. The only reason you are still alive is that I find your stupidity mildly amusing. Even though it meant being disowned by his family, Shen managed to weaponize fireworks and assemble an entire army of wolves with the mission to wipe out Kung Fu forever. What really brings him to the top is his personal connection to our favorite dragon warrior, Po. Shen was the reason Po became an orphan, and he committed mass genocide on other pandas without a single regret. Despite this, Po was able to defeat this paranoid peacock by finding inner peace with his past, something Shen was never able to achieve. I took away your parents. Everything. I, I scarred you for life. See, that's the thing, Shen. Scars heal. No, they don't. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 